Well, this is a momentous day here at Tips from a Shipwright. We've got it going on now. I mean, we've said we're going to build Orca, and that's what we're going to do. And uh, we're looking for some material, and we're looking for all kinds of items that belong on that boat. Sources for lumber, just about everything. This boat will be completed, and it'll be very, very nicely built. It'll be an exact replica of Orca. Exact replica. What I'm doing right now is I'm actually working on it. I squared up some timbers a little while back. Now I'm checking them to make sure how square they actually are. And uh, they come out pretty nice, but you have to be much, much more accurate at the very ends where I'm making the scarves. So you have to sight it. You have to put like a couple of pieces of wood across that are parallel to each other and look down, get your eye down to that level and see whether or not there's a twist in the timber. And believe me, a matter of thousands of twists in that thing, it's going to show up on the ends of that pieces of wood that I put across in a big, big way. Once I've determined where the imperfections might be, I can take my electric plane and knock that right down, just tune it up so, so easily. My plane is set so shallow that it's kind of like sanding almost because you don't have to be in any one direction. And uh, like I've always said, I use the thing uh, quite a bit different than most people do. You know, it might be perfect on one end, but not in the center of the timber. So, you know, you move the other piece down and move the other piece down and check the whole thing. Now, here's a trick that you might have seen me do before. I'm going to use my level, the aluminum part of it, and I'm going to put a whole bunch of lead on there for my pencil and then flip it over and, uh, you know, rub the timber with it. And what it does is, it shows you exactly where all the high spots are. It's just another extension of trying to get it even better and better. That's, that's what it is. But this is one nice piece of wood to make a keel out of. It's not real broad like sailboat keels are, but it's a parallel timber. It's the same dimension across as it is up and down. And uh, it's quarter sawn. That's what I did at the mill, was to get it to look like that with the annual rings in one direction and the same direction on the other end because if you don't, when it shrinks or swells, it becomes what you made square into a rhombus. You know, so these timbers and stuff like this are alive actually. They move, they swell, they contract, they set, bend, twist, everything. You know, but this piece of wood right here, I doubt that it would be doing anything like that. Now that I've got the top of it straightened out, I'm going to check and see how far out the sides are. You know, and it's not very much, but I'm going to actually take care of that, too. I'm going to get another one in here. This one's very good right here. So, you know, what I'm going to do is turn it down 90 degrees and work on it some more. Nice. Using a framing square like this, you have to be mighty careful because if you don't place the square, nice and straight across or square to the edges, it'll be off when you're trying to look at the vertical side because you can swing the vertical side one way and it'll, it'll touch the timber and swing it the other way and it'll be away from the timber. If you have it perfectly straight across, it gives you an idea. But up here, it needs a little bit more on this side, right here. It needs it there and here. Now I'm scarfing two pieces together. This is the forward part of the keel, and this is going to be the after section of the keel. They're spliced together with this kind of a nice long splice here. It's three feet long. The ends are an inch and a quarter and an inch and a quarter here. And uh, it, it's undercut so that the ends don't pop up. You know, I've cut it a little bit different way than most people would, I'm sure of that. You know, it was so that I wouldn't cut past the line or cut the line away, because if I did that, I wouldn't know exactly where I'm at. So basically what I've done, I cut this with an 8-inch circular saw with a 10-inch blade, because it's 6 inches across, and no circular saw that I've got is going to cut 6 inches. So I cut in 3 inches from each side, and, and I want them to match. And uh, I think that's pretty much impossible because basically what would happen, uh, you'd get one cut a little low and one cut a little bit high and uh, you, know, you wouldn't be able to repair it. So basically what I've done is I cut it up this way on a two degree angle and up this way on a two degree angle. And uh, now the center is high. So I can knock that down no problem at all without affecting the line a single bit. Now right in here, I can't get to with a circular saw. 
from each side. It kind of leaves like a shape like this from one side to the other side. I have to finish that up with a handsaw. This cut I can make with a circular saw, no problem at all. And uh, one of the things about this cut is, is that it's not 90 degrees to this plane. It's cut back under there, so when I put the next piece, it's kind of trapped under there. You know, no matter how I bolt it down, I don't want this any even moving or just the tiniest bit. So I'm going to put screws in the next piece to hold this very end down. And uh, with that and this, there'll be no coming up. Today we're going to show you how we cut that scarf. We're going to cut a scarf in the end of this piece right here that I'm sitting on. And those two pieces will go together. So uh, it'll be pretty interesting, I think, about how I go about it. I think that it's possible that I kind of go about this a little bit differently than most people would. And uh, I don't think I suggest that anybody uh, copy me, but, you know, uh, it's pretty dangerous, really. But, you know, it comes out so nice and easy that uh, that's the way I have to do it. You know, first I'm going to make a nice parallel line down there about six inches because I'm, I'm dealing with that only. The height of the keel on the top, the seventh inch, you know, doesn't need to get figured into the scarf. If it's not accurate, you'll have trouble fitting it together, you'll have trouble cutting it, all kinds of different problems. There's different ways of doing this. You could use a pattern and transfer it to each side. I just decided I would just lay it out just like this. This is what I would have to do with a pattern. You know, I have to lay the pattern out like this, so I just go right to the material and do it. Now I'm going to take a magic marker and dot on the side of the line that I want to cut away. That makes it easy because you look down there and there's lines all over the place. You could get confused and cut one on the wrong side of the line. Oh, that'd be easy. So I make sure that I understand it perfectly well and then I go ahead and put those dots and now I'm safe. This cut is fun for me actually. I really enjoy doing things like this. You know, I've thought about it quite a bit and like I said, I'm going to cut this on a two degree angle or with the skill saw set on two degrees. So, you know, and we're going to plunge it in on this end because otherwise, if I saw it this way, the two degrees would be the other way. I can't do that. I have to start from there and go this way. So, you know, I'm going to back it up to a piece up here. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to pick up these two by sixes. I'm going to add them to this side. Now, the reason that I put these two by sixes on the side of this thing, or really on the top, is because I want it to be nice and even with this, extending the material right here for my uh, circular saw to sit on. Now, without that, I'd be rocking around there like this with the saw, and uh, it would change degrees as I went because the saw would pick itself up. And uh, on this end, I really don't need it because i got enough space right here for the table of my saw to sit on. So it's only to get started, really. I'm also going to clamp on a fence to follow because I don't have the confidence to follow the line really, really nice by myself. You know, this is a guide. If you place it in the right spot, the distance from the blade to the edge of the table, uh, you know, you just follow along that thing and it looks like some kind of machine did it, you know. I'm just about ready to make this cut and uh, I've got a batten right here, a piece of wood to follow with the saw and uh, I've got a piece right here that's 90 degrees to that. I am going to cut this part right now and I can't cut past that because if I cut past it, you know, it'll just be up in here where it doesn't belong. So I'm going to stop right there, and that's what this is about. So what I'm going to do is put the tail end of my circular saw right in there, and then I'm going to lower it down in there, and like I say, it's set to cut a two-inch bevel that direction, not that direction. So, you know, I'm just going to pick it up and start. This cut is going to be serious business right here. Geometrically, that first dive in there is uh, basically not supposed to be accurate because you're binding the blade a little bit. Until you get pushing it ahead, then it straightens that out. But we're talking a matter of thousands there. Look at the dust coming off of this thing. You know, the cut is three inches deep and it's just shooting out of the bottom there. It's uh, it's kind of fun to watch for me happen. I, I imagine it's fun for everybody else. Now this is an eight inch circular saw, but it's got a 10 inch blade on it. And you have to do quite a bit of alterations like to the guide on the top. At the end of the cut, you've got two choices. 
One is to pull the blade straight up while it's still rotating. Not a good idea. The other is to drive the saw right off the end. That's much safer, but it pops out, the blade's still going around. What I do is push it up to the center of the blade is at the end of the cut. Now I let go of the trigger, let it stop before I try to pull it out of there. Well, check it out, that's our first cut. And you can just barely see the pencil mark on the edge there, and it come out nice and straight. And that's not because of me, that's because of this. So we're gonna remove the batten and flip the timber over and cut the other side. Like I say, it's on two degrees too. It's opposing the two degrees of the first cut. Now the difference between the two cuts is I cut right out, right off the end on the first cut. Now this cut, I just have to stop in the right spot. I don't want to go by it or I'd be cutting right into the timber. So you have to be very careful, stop in the right spot. Don't pull the saw out of there until it stops. That's that. The next thing for me to do is make this cut right here. I'm going to cut it from the top on a 20 degree angle and it doesn't matter if it goes past the line because this part's going to be removed. This is the keel for Orca right here. The two timbers joined together. Now the boat's got a four foot ahead of that and quite an extension behind that so the boat's going to be 40 feet. This thing's like 32 feet or something like that right now and uh, you know, this is going to be fun, really. This is really the type of work I like to do. This is the type of work I've done a lot of. So, you know, skips and things are fantastic, and I love them, but this is a whole new uh, realm right here. And, uh, you know, these timbers work out really, really nice. The scarf that I made right in there, I separated it a little bit so they could get a look at how it works and how it fits. You know, I don't have it closed right up on both ends, but I've taken it apart and I'm taking it apart anyhow so that I can bed it and then rebolt it. Now here's that undercut that I was talking about right here. You know, it's tilted back like that. So when I slam it up tight, this piece is stuck underneath this piece. That's what stops the end from rising up and down. So that's what we're doing with the keel right there. This thing fit pretty nice actually when I had it clamped together. So this is a huge step ahead. We have some more work to do. The next thing I'm going to do is splice on the forefoot. I've got a nice curved piece like a Novi has for the forefoot. And uh, then we're going to take and end up putting the stem on the forefoot. So that, that's where we're going is the whole center line first. You know, that's what we're going to lay down first. Now we're going to put it on its side actually to do the connections because it all sits on horses like these roller dollies I've got right here. And uh, you know, once that's connected, We'll tip it up like this and then put the stern post in it because it's going to be mortised down into the timber. So, you know, that's where we're going. We're, uh, we're setting the keel and setting up the forefoot and the stem. And uh, we do have to go back to Dukes to get some piece of, for the uh, stern post and another piece for the horn timber. The stern post is going to be kind of funny because it starts off six by. It starts getting narrower and then it goes out to like 10 by where the shaft goes through. So it's kind of sculpted like that, pretty nice. And uh, not all of them are that way, but this one's going to be that way. We're also going to be at the Newport Boat Show, September 15th to the 18th. Now, we're there to answer questions about Orca. That's what we'd like to do. And I imagine we'll get quite a few of them, but uh, it's going to be fun. I, I mean, I'll answer all kinds of questions if you want me to about other boats or about structure or anything like that, you know. But uh, Orca's the idea right there. So we'll be there with Total Boat. And uh, I just want you guys to come down and see us. That'd be fantastic if you would. And uh, I'll spend time with you.